partial correlation, Wikipedia article audio. In probability theory and statistics, partial correlation measures the degree of association between two random variables, with the effect of a set of controlling random variables removed. If we are interested in finding whether or to what extent there is a numerical relationship between two variables of interest, using their correlation coefficient will give misleading results if there is another, confounding, variable that is numerically related to both variables of interest. This misleading information can be avoided by controlling for the confounding variable, which is done by computing the partial correlation coefficient. This is precisely the motivation for including other right-side variables in a multiple regression. Example Formal definition Computation Using linear regression Using recursive formula Using matrix inversion Interpretation Geometrical As conditional independence test Semi-partial correlation Use in time series analysis For example, if we have economic data on the consumption, income, and wealth of various individuals and we wish to see if there is a relationship between consumption and income, Failing to control for wealth when computing a correlation coefficient between consumption and income would give a misleading result, since income might be numerically related to wealth which in turn might be numerically related to consumption, a measured correlation between consumption and income might actually be contaminated by these other correlations. The use of a partial correlation avoids this problem. Like the correlation coefficient, the partial correlation coefficient takes on a value in the range from a euro 1 to 1. The value a euro 1 conveys a perfect negative correlation controlling for some variables, the value 1 conveys a perfect positive linear relationship, and the value 0 conveys that there is no linear relationship. The partial correlation coincides with the conditional correlation if the random variables are jointly distributed as the multivariate normal, other elliptical, multivariate hypergeometric, multivariate negative hypergeometric, multinomial or Dirichlet distribution, but not in general otherwise. Suppose we have the following data on three variables, x, y, and z. These data have the feature that whenever z equals 0, x equals exactly twice y, and whenever z equals 1, x is exactly 5 times y. Thus, contingent on the value of z, there is an exact relationship between x and y, but the relationship cannot be said to be exact without reference to the value of z. In fact, if we compute the Pearson correlation coefficient between variables x and y, the result is approximately 0.969, while if we compute the partial correlation between x and y, using the formula given below, we find a partial correlation of 0.919. The computations were done using R with the following code. Formally, the partial correlation between x and y given a set of n controlling variables z equals, written i x y a z, is the correlation between the residuals e x and e y resulting from the linear regression of x with z and of y with z, respectively. The first order partial correlation is the difference between a correlation and the product of the removable correlations divided by the product of the coefficients of alienation of the removable correlations. The coefficient of alienation, and its relation with joint variance through correlation are available in Guilford. A simple way to compute the sample partial correlation for some data is to solve the two associated linear regression problems, get the residuals, and calculate the correlation between the residuals. 
let x and y be, as above, random variables taking real values, and let z be the n-dimensional vector-valued random variable. We write xi, yi, and zi to denote the ith of nid observations from some joint probability distribution over real random variables x, y and z, with zi having been augmented with a 1 to allow for a constant term in the regression. Solving the linear regression problem amounts to finding dimensional regression coefficient vectors, w, x, a, and W, Y, A, such that with N being the number of observations and I, W, V, I copyright, comma backslash math backslash wrangle, the scalar product between the vectors W and V. The residuals are then and the sample partial correlation is then given by the usual formula for sample correlation but between these new derived values. It can be computationally expensive to solve the linear regression problems. Actually, the nth order partial correlation can be easily computed from 3th order partial correlations. The zeroth order partial correlation IXYAA is defined to be the regular correlation coefficient IXY. It holds for any z 0 a z backslash and backslash math that Novelli implementing this computation as a recursive algorithm yields an exponential time complexity. However, this computation has the overlapping sub-problems property, such that using dynamic programming or simply caching the results of the recursive calls yields a complexity of O N 3. Note in the case where Z is a single variable, this reduces to in O N 3 time. Another approach allows all partial correlations to be computed between any two variables xi and xj of a set V of cardinality n, given all others, i.e., V, A, X, I, X, J, backslash set minus backslash x backslash, if the correlation matrix I copyright equals, where I per thousand ij equals I x I x j is positive definite and therefore invertible. If we define P equals IJ equals I copyright A1, we have Let three variables X, Y, Z be chosen from a joint probability distribution over N variables V. Further let VI, 1A per thousand IA per thousand N, be n n-dimensional iid observations taken from the joint probability distribution over v. We then consider the n-dimensional vectors x, y, and z. It can be shown that the residuals e x i coming from the linear regression of x on z, if also considered as an n-dimensional vector e x, have a zero scalar product with the vector z generated by z. This means that the residuals vector lies on a dimensional hyperplane SZ that is perpendicular to Z. The same also applies to the residuals EYI generating a vector EY. The desired partial correlation is then the cosine of the angle I between the projections EX and EY of X and Y, respectively, onto the hyperplane perpendicular to Z, CH7. With the assumption that all involved variables are multivariate Gaussian, the partial correlation IXYAZ is zero if and only if X is conditionally independent from Y given Z. This property does not hold in the general case. To test if a sample partial correlation, I, X, Y, A, Z, implies a true population partial correlation of zero, Fisher's Z transform of the partial correlation can be used. The null hypothesis is H zero I X Y A Z equals 
zero colon backslash row equals zero to be tested against the two tail alternative H A I X Y A Z A per thousand zero colon backslash row backslash nick zero. We reject H zero with significance level I plus or minus if where I is the cumulative distribution function of a Gaussian distribution with zero mean and unit standard deviation, and N is the sample size. This Z transform is approximate and that the actual distribution of the sample correlation coefficient is not straightforward. However, an exact t-test based on a combination of the partial regression coefficient, the partial correlation coefficient and the partial variances is available. The distribution of the sample partial correlation was described by Fisher. The semi-partial correlation statistic is similar to the partial correlation statistic. Both compare variations of two variables after certain factors are controlled for, but to calculate the semi-partial correlation one holds the third variable constant for either x or y but not both, whereas for the partial correlation one holds the third variable constant for both. The semi-partial correlation compares the unique variation of one variable, with the unfiltered variation of the other while the partial correlation compares the unique variation of one variable to the unique variation of the other. The semi-partial correlation can be viewed as more practically relevant because it is scaled to the total variability in the dependent variable. Conversely, it is less theoretically useful because it is less precise about the role of the unique contribution of the independent variable. The absolute value of the semi-partial correlation of X with Y is always less than or equal to that of the partial correlation of X with Y. The reason is this, suppose the correlation of X with Z has been removed from X, giving the residual vector EX. In computing the semi-partial correlation, Y still contains both unique variance and variance due to its association with Z. But EX, being uncorrelated with Z, can only explain some of the unique part of the variance of Y and not the part related to Z. In contrast, with the partial correlation, only EY is to be explained, so there is less variance of the type that EX cannot explain. In time series analysis, the partial autocorrelation function of a time series is defined for lag h, as. This function is used to determine the appropriate lag length for an autoregression.